Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to yet another interesting episode on your favorite Little Sla YouTube channel. So today in this video, we're going to see how to add a file uh, inside the container VM. For example, if you can see uh, inside the Docker uh, or if you are someone who is using Azure Kubernetes service, the container services, and if you see there is an option where you can view the file. So now since the container is not running, you are not able to see the files, but if you are someone who wants to make changes to your files, or if you want to add a file, or if you want to remove a file inside the container, right? Or if you want to delete some files inside the containers, uh, we'll see how to do that. So in this video, I'll show you how to add a file uh, to the containers, or how to remove a file, or how to delete a file, or how to update a file, right? So for that, uh, before creating a before doing all these operations we should have or we should have a container right so in this video i'm going to show you how to create a container through an image and then we will see how to uh, do all those operations the addition the removal and the updation of the files so now we'll create our own docker image and for that i'm going to use my visual studio code and the first step of it is you should have your docker installed and make sure you are having your docker running make sure you open that and if it is make sure it's running and the next step is like I'm having my Visual Studio code and the first step of it is I'm going to create a file. I'm going to create a Docker file. So let me go back to my Visual Studio code and click on this new file. So this will get me a new file. So I'm going to enter the, I'm going to create the Docker file. So just enter Docker file and that will create a Docker file for you. And I'm going to uh, create a Python application. So I have my code here. So and I, I will uh, upload this code um, in my GitHub repo. So in case if you want to uh, try it you can uh, fork or you can clone uh, this repo from there and then you can use it and i'm going to use um, the python 3.9 the work directory is going to be us user source app and in fact yeah we're going to add our remove file insert from this location and i'm going to create a requirements.txt file uh, which is going to be a dependency file and then i'm going to do a installation and then we're going to copy the rest of our application code so all these actions are going to be done you through this docker file and here if you can see i'm going to use the 80 port so 80 port we all know it's going to be http port it's not a https so if it's https it's going to be 443 and here it is 80 because it's a http port and i'm going to run my uh, app.py application which is basically a python application so i've created my first file and then i'm going to add my second file which is going to be my requirements.txt like i've mentioned here so i'm going to copy the requirements.txt so which is Going to be copied inside the uh, the container right so let me create the requirements.txt and what do i insert it so i'm going to insert flask and then request so these are the contents that should be that will be inside the requirements.txt so these are the python dependencies so that's why i'm entering it here and then the python application so app.py so app.py will help me to create a python application it's going to be a very simple application so just to print hello docker uh, in the application it's going to be very simple uh, because the the main objective of this video is to see how to add or how to update so those those file operations are the are the uh, main important uh, functionality so we're going to just see only these part so since we have created it so we are we should have the app.py the docker file and the requirements.txt so all these should be here and now let me go to the terminal. So for that, click on this three dots, go to terminal and then new terminal. And you'll get this uh, terminal window here and you are, we are inside the container training. So let me just enter LS to see whether I'm in the right uh, folder or in the right structure. So yes, so we can see all the files in here. So now we can run the, or we have to first build the Docker. So for that, we have to enter Docker build minus T and then the Python app. So it's going to be my, so if you see here, I've got the app name, which is going to be my Python app. Or yep, let me just confirm it, confirm the folder. Yes, I think we can run it now. Yep, my app space dot. So this will actually build the Docker. So if you go to the uh, Docker, you could not see any of that image that is getting created so far, but let's wait for this to get completed. And once it is completed, automatically we can see that image. 
So now if you see, we can see that image. See, the My Python app image has been added to the list of images. And coming to the containers, okay, it's it's not yet started, so that's why we are not able to see it in the containers, but it's still in the um, image. It's one of the image that we have created and it is running. So now we have to run this container, right? So you, now we are able to see the Docker output as it builds the image layer by layer. So if you see here, it has built the image layer by layer by pushing all the libraries, by extracting all the tokens from the Python. So if you see uh, the work directory step, the uh, it's it has logged into this or it has changed to this directory and it has copied the requirements.txt file and then it has installed the uh, dependencies and all the files. So this is how actually the Docker works. So it, it basically uh, installs everything inside the particular location, not inside the entire mission, but it's just a kind of a pod, right? So I, I think we have seen everything in, in the previous uh, Kubernetes video. And then we have exported that into an image and then we have exported it, the layers. And then here we can see the writing of the image. So with the image numbers, if you see the 376, that's the number here, that's 37D671. Uh, so that's the image that we have created here. And then we have named the Docker as my Python app. So this is very simple. I mean, like once you start practicing, once you keep on practicing it, you would know how, how it work. So now we have created the image and now let's run the container because if you see, uh, we can see the image here, but we don't see the container in here, right? So let's now run the container and the command to run the container is Docker run minus D minus P 4000 and the port number is 80 and then our image that's my Python app and that has created this container so if you see if you go to the containers section you can see that number right so that's the Python app and that's running successfully and when you click on this you can see <clears throat> the hello docker with the local host 4000 that's the port that we have used right so you can see it very well and now the next step, right? So we have successfully created the Docker and then we have successfully created the container. And if you see here, if you click on it and if you see, uh, okay, like it's mentioned, it, this is the development server and you're not, you're not supposed to use it in the production deployment. And it's very simple, like it's running on the local host, the HTTP port number. So this, this is the port number that we are using, local host port number, and it's using, it's running the serving, uh, serving uh, Flask app. And then the debug mode is off. Then if you go to inspect, you can see the ID that's created for this particular container and the path, everything is set here. There are like much more, like if you keep on, um, if you want to like, if you, if you see the state, the status of uh, this particular container, it shows it's running. So for example, if you want to see like, if it is like failed, then you can see that this particular, the state of this particular container is failed. And then they can see the image details of it. So this is the image, if you see, I have showed this image details, right? in the previous window so this is the image file and then you can see the resolve configuration path the host name path the host path the log path everything will be like set up here and now coming back to the original like the core so here we have the folder right the files section and if you go to the boot file and if you can see the dev folder and you have the home folder you can see the files in here you can see the etc folder so you can see all the files in here like uh, but the thing is like we are supposed to add some files to this location to this files location right so we'll see how to do that and also we'll see how to remove a file from here and also we'll see how to update a file from here so uh before we move into copying the file the copying the file or the removing of the file first you should understand the uh, the structure of how uh, the files are located and just to show you, um, if I go to my uh, Visual Studio code, if you see, uh, we have got the app.py, the Docker file, the requirements.txt. And it is inside the work directory, which is under the user source app, right? So now let me show you in the graphical way. And then uh, the main thing is like, if you're someone who wants to uh, improve your knowledge on containers or Kubernetes, you should understand how to you work on Linux, right? So that's the reason I will uh, again take you through how to do it using uh, the command line mode uh, sorry let me start a new terminal and if you go here under the user and then under the user you have the src folder and then under the src folder you have the app folder and here are the three files that we have created the docker file the requirements.txt and the app.py so now 
we are going to add a file so now you are able to see the files right so now we will see how to add a file to this folder or to any of these folder that we have here and before that first we'll have to um, do some commands to log in to that machine because these kubernetes these folder structures are in in the linux mode right and in the linux operating environment so we'll have to navigate to that particular location and for that uh, i did a docker ps and that will give me the output of my docker image the docker container and then we'll have to access the container shell so to access or to explore the containers file system we need to open an interactive shell session session so something what we do for the uh, linux machines which is running inside the container and for that i'm going to use the docker exec docker execute command minus it and then the container id so here i have my container id let me oh sorry let me exec it container id and then bin slash bash so this will get me to the uh, folder which is the uh, user src folder and uh, so let me just okay so we are already inside the uh, user src app folder if you see here we are already in, inside the root directory with the user src app folder so in case if you want to uh, if you want to see how to do it so just type us user slash src slash app so this oh sorry app so this will take you to that folder so if you see here bash user source app is a directory and now we are in that current directory and now to see the files so you have to type ls minus l so this will uh, let me just maximize the screen for you to view it yeah so yeah so when you enter ls minus l this will give me the uh, the contents of that file and I'll, I'll i'll tell you in a separate video on what is this r w x r minus x minus r what what does this tell about and then uh, this root structure basically uh, what does this tells about because this again will get you, you might get it as, a, as one of the question in interview so i will we'll discuss it in, in, as part of the interview questions videos so for now this is what you should understand that is you have to enter ls minus l to view the contents okay and uh, in case if you want to edit some of the files like if you want to see what is inside the requirements.txt when you enter uh, cat requirements.txt it will sh show you what is inside that file and uh, for now let me okay let me just stay at this point and now we'll see how to add a file or how to copy a file from our local machine to in inside the container okay and again this terminal you can open it uh, in the same in the inside the docker itself you don't need to go in back and forth between your vs code and you have to come back to their docker so instead you can just try all these in in your docker container itself so now uh, let me create a file let me create a file in my uh, visual studio code i'm just I'm going to add a file so from there we're going to copy it to the uh, container image so uh, coming back to this original part the core of what we're going to see is it's going to be copying a file to a docker container so we're going to copy a new file it can be any file it can be a config.json any any json file or any supporting file that you're going to add after you create your make because by the time when you create an application uh, you will have your basic setup and then once the application gets bigger and bigger you will need to add or you will have to make changes to your application right so uh, in this one uh, I'll, I'll show you how to add or how to copy a file to a docker container so for that let's make sure that we have our application running so let me just go to the container and make sure that it is running fine and uh, here yes the application is running fine so the next step is i'm going to go to the visual studio code and i'm going to create a file uh i just a very basic file this is just going to be an example so i'm just going to add create a file which is message.txt it's just a very simple file and uh, so it's, it's going to be an empty file for now uh, because the only uh, objective is to copy this file so for now let me just show you again if we go back to our container file go to the files and then under the user under the source under the app folder okay uh, this is uh, not the previous one uh, yeah this is a previous one that uh, that was like which is not a part of this one but still uh, yeah these are the three files which we have and now what i'll do is let me run a copy command so the command is going to be 
uh, you can either do it from Visual Studio Code or you can even do it from your uh, Docker as well. But for now, I'll choose to do it via Docker because I have my settings here. So it's going to be Docker and uh, copy is, I mean, like CP is the mess, uh, command to copy the file and then message.txt and then my Python app, the container name, right? The image name slash user and we know the next folder which is src the source and then the app and then the file name which is message.txt again the same thing so when i click enter um no such my python minus app dot text okay let's do one thing let me go back here and then let me copy the container id and then let me do docker cp message.txt paste colon slash uh, forward slash user src slash app slash message.txt and now yep uh, since the container name was okay, i have actually given the image name and not the container name so it's always better to give the container name okay, okay, i have ever given naughty padin or the container id either should be fine either the container name or the container id but make sure you are giving the container id not the image because one image can have multiple container id so always make sure you're giving it the right container and as you see here uh, i have successfully copied the file so let me go back to the original folder click the naughty bird in the container and then the files and let's see uh yep so here i've got the message.txt so i have copied the file successfully from my local location to my container image. So this is how you can do it successfully. And also uh, let me do it with, with one more thing. So let me uh, get this location copied and even I can just check it out from here. Um, there is another, I mean like one more way to uh, do the checking. You can do it via CLI as well. So and it's going to be Docker exec minus it. And then let me paste the uh, sorry, uh, let me paste the uh, container ID and then slash bin slash bash. So this will get me to the bash command, which is uh, I, I'll be uh, literally into my uh, Docker ground, uh, Docker playground or in, into the Linux ground. So now when I enter, okay, and I'm in, in my user SRC app. So when I type ls, I can see the message.txt file. So this is another way where you can uh, check your uh, command that's been successfully pay, uh, created. I mean, the file has been successfully created. And this is one more, one way of uh, copying uh, or doing the copy thing. And then in case if I really want to do it, uh, for example, uh, the copying part, I can even do it like this. The uh, I can do it, the copy, uh, by writing the copy message.txt and that will create the uh, that will copy the file for me inside the docker container yeah so with that uh, i think uh, i have showed you how to copy a file so in our next video uh, i'll come up with a scenario where uh, uh, you can delete or you can remove a file from your container and we'll see how to do that um, in our next video so i don't want to like uh, push too much of uh, uh, technicality in, in same video so just uh, practice this so that's one thing which i always tell you because the more you practice you will understand how does it work like uh, you can understand uh, all these things like uh, how does it i mean wh what does a docker file tells you like the work directory thing and then it, it does it does copying the files and then it runs the installation part and then finally it done so it does whatever the files that are in the location it copies all the file and then it exposes the port number and then finally, it runs the command to your app. So all these things, so you, once you start preparing, once you start practicing it, you'll understand it. And like I told you, uh, I will upload this file. Okay, let me do it. Just a second. Let me open my getup.command. And then, yep, it's going to be a new repo. And I, okay, let me just container training. And a readme file, create a repo, and then get me, uh, let me the, uh, get the command. And then after that, what I'll do is let me go to my Visual Studio Code, 
click here let me close the folder and then what I'll do is I'm going to click on clone git repo and then I'm pasting the URL and this will connect me and the one thing which I have to do is I'll have to go to the container training folder which I already created and then I'm going to select this as my repository location and that will have my file so I'll have to uh, import the files inside here so let me add um, the files now let me get my four files now so I have pasted the files whatever I have created and then in case if you are uh, a CLI guy you can type it this way uh, git status and that will show you the files that has to be added and git add space dot will stage those files and now I have staged those files and then again git commit minus m initial commit and this will add the files and then when I do a git status yes all the files are committed and now git push origin main so this will push all the files to the main for location and then let me open my code yep and you can see the file so yeah just to let you know you can find all these files in my uh shanmugam uh, github repo and then inside the container training repository i'll just i'll even paste this uh, for you to get it in the uh, description section so that you can just download this file and you can try this and yeah with that i come to an end of this video and uh, Going forward, I'll, I'll just show you, uh, I, like I told you, um, we'll see uh, what does the R, W, all those things tell you. And we'll see another video like how to delete a file or how to remove a file or how to update a file. And then with, that I, with that, I come to an end of this video and uh, we'll see in our next video. Until then, it's bye-bye from Asan Shanmukam and your favorite little slide YouTube channel. Take care and bye-bye.